Greetings, brethren. This is a very unique time that we are all facing at the moment. It's locked down here in New Zealand, and we don't know how long this is going to go. It's the very beginning, and we need a word from the Lord, and, and I believe the first word that we need from the Lord is really prayer. We need to pray. And I've entitled this message, Prayer Overcomes Worry. Prayer Overcomes Worry. What are the things that people worry about the most? Well, somebody did a survey once and they, they, uh, they asked them what... Uh, they asked a hundred people about the things that they worry about, and the top things in that survey were, Angela, what what would you guess? What would be, do you think, some of the top things that people would worry about? Finances. Finances. Family. Family. Their health. Their health. You, you're doing well. The first one on the list was was dying. Health. Um, there was the life of their, their loved ones, safety, money, war, failure. And if that question was asked today, what, what do you think might be the number one thing that people would say that they are worried about? Probably people would say this coronavirus and the world, what's happening to the world? as a result of this coronavirus. Could you open your Bibles with me, please, to Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7. Do we worry about these things I've mentioned, or do we worry about other things? This passage of Scripture has a word for you and me today, and it's a word that we, we need. And this verse says, Philippians 4, verses 6 to 7, the Apostle Paul, he writes, um, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God, and the peace of God, that surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds, through Christ Jesus. What a wonderful word. What a wonderful word to us. Be anxious for nothing. What does he mean? He's just, it's really simple. What he means is he's saying, don't worry about anything. Don't worry about anything. Worry won't help. But there is something else that will help. And that's what we're going to look at in this message. I pray that you will be comforted by the message. So who wrote this word to the Philippians? Well, it was the Apostle Paul. And who was he to tell them not to worry? Who was he to tell them not to worry? Well, he was the person to tell them not to worry. The Apostle Paul had experienced enormous suffering. It says in the scriptures that five times he received 40 stripes. 40 lashes minus one. It says that he was beaten with rods. It, it, was, it said in the scriptures he was stoned three times. With stones. He was shipwrecked. It says in, in the scriptures that he was in perils of robbers, in nakedness. He spent a day and a night in the deep, in the ocean. If, if, if somebody tells me don't worry, I or tells you don't worry, sometimes you might think, well, who are you to tell me not to worry? You don't know what I'm going through. You don't know what I've experienced. But here is a person, the Apostle Paul, who's experienced it all worse than probably anybody listening right now. So if he says don't worry, if he's not going to worry about things, then we can 
as well. Stay free of, of worry. Now, if you look at verse 7 of Philippians 1, the Apostle Paul, he also, it says there that he was in chains. He was in chains. So here he is, he's in prison, and he's telling them not to worry. Don't be worried, he said, about anything. Don't be worried about life. Don't be worried about food. Don't be worried about your relationships. Don't be worried about your health. Don't, don't be worried about your, your children's health, your loved one's health. Don't be worried about Satan. Don't be worried about the Antichrist. And today, don't be worried about the coronavirus. Or, or in the sophisticated way, don't be worried about COVID-19. Don't worry about anything is the message that we are receiving from this man of God, the Apostle Paul. And it's a very apt message for this time that we are in right now. It's not just me telling you not to worry. Here is the man of God. He's saying, don't worry about coronavirus. Don't worry about it. But rather, he says, instead of worry, be anxious for nothing but in everything. By prayer and supplication, let your requests be made known to God. First, he says, don't worry about anything. Don't be anxious about anything. But now he says, pray about everything. Pray about your loved ones. Pray about your health. Pray about your jobs. Pray about your finances. Pray about your, your, your pets. Pray, pray about everything. Pray about the, the future. Pray about other countries and what they're going through. Pray about everything. This is the message that we really need to take on board right now as Christians. We have, a, we have a great power that God has given us, the power of prayer, and we need to use it. We need to use it strongly. We need to use it. So it says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, let your request be made known to God. What supplication? We know what prayer is. We know that prayer is... is, is is having a conversation with God. Prayer is about praying for, for our loved ones. It's about praying for our needs. It's about praying for their needs. It's about praying for the world's needs. Prayer is about confessing our sin. Prayer is about repentance. Prayer is, is many things that we, we, we can bring to God. But what is supplication? Supplication is a specific kind of prayer. It's a prayer when you are praying for God to supply for your needs, to supply the needs of, of others. It's to, to supply the needs of the world. Supplication is, is petition and it's a pleading. It's a pleading with God. It's, it's a strong pleading, asking God to supply for the need. So be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, then it says, let your requests be made known to God. I want to just point out that word request. When we pray to God, it's, it's a request. Sometimes we forget that. It, it's a humble request. Yes, we come boldly to the throne of grace because God has allowed us to, but we, we come humbly as well and we request from God. We don't demand from God anything. We don't presume anything when we're asking. We, I, I was once at a prayer meeting and, and I heard somebody pray, I command you, Holy Spirit. Uh-oh. I just opened my eyes. I couldn't, couldn't believe it. We must be humble when we come before God. We can't some people like to decree and declare in Jesus' name that this is done. But we need to be humble when we pray before God. Because ultimately, 
it's his will that 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 must be done not our will not our own will that that must be done we have to show god respect when we pray to him now i left one thing out in verse 6 that goes with prayer and supplication what goes with prayer and supplication thanksgiving be anxious for for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with Thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Did you know that being thankful, that having an attitude of gratitude, it's a huge part of the Christian life. It's such a vital part of the Christian life. And here it is, a vital part in prayer. Why? 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 Because... We have everything that we have because of God. And we must be thankful to Him. God is the great provider of everything. So we must be thankful to Him. God has provided us our lives. God sustains us in our lives. And what God did for us at the cross through Jesus Christ to sacrifice His only begotten Son for you and me, for our sins, that is, that is something that is just so amazing. It's so incredible. Nobody could have ever expected that of God, to ask that of God. And he's done that so that we can have eternal life and happiness with him. So we must always be thankful to God. And I, I notice in the letters of Paul, and, I, and I'm just going to open the Bible here and go through the letters of Paul. I notice at the start of each of his letters, except for maybe two uh, or possibly three, at the start of these letters, there's thanks. I look at Romans 1 and verse 8, and it says, First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for you all, that your faith is spoken of throughout the whole world. I go to 1 Corinthians verse 4. He writes, I thank my God always concerning you for the grace of God which was given you by Christ Jesus. I move along to... Philippians, verse 3, Apostle Paul's in prison, and he writes in verse 3, I thank my God upon every remembrance of you. We go to 1 Thessalonians, verse 2, we give thanks to God always for you all, making mention of you in, in our prayers. And I could go on and on. Second Thessalonians, verse 3. We are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is fitting, because your faith grows exceedingly, and the love of every one of you all abounds towards each other. Isn't that interesting? Thanks is right at the beginning of most of Paul's letters. That's, so being thankful is such an important thing for us when we pray. Why? Why is it so important that when we pray, when we make supplication to God, why is it so important that we are thankful to God? Well, it, it's good to tell somebody that you love that you are thankful for them in your lives. And prayer is the way that we thank God, that we, we show Him that we're thankful. Another way, another reason why prayer and thanks go together is because when we pray, God does want us to pray with, with confidence. He wants us to pray believing, believing so much with, with certainty that he has answered our prayer, that we thank him in advance for answering our prayer. And his answer might be yes, it might be no, it might be wait, but God wants us to be Thankful in our prayers. Thankful that he's even listening to us. Such a mighty God. Who does verse 6 say that our prayers are made to? Obviously, it says that they are made to God. When we pray, be encouraged that we are praying to God. We are praying to the Omni One. O-M-N-I the omnipotent God. We are praying to the all-powerful God. We are praying to the omnipresent God. God who is everywhere. We are praying to the omniscient God. The God who knows 
everything. And we're praying to the omnibenevolent God. Another way of saying that, we're praying to the all-loving God. This is who we're praying to. And that should encourage us. The omniscient, omnipotent, omnipresent, and omnibenevolent, all-loving God. Be encouraged as we pray. This is the God that we are praying to. Now, verse 7 has a great promise um, that if we choose, instead of worrying, if we choose instead to pray about this situation that this world is facing right now, if we choose to pray, and that's a choice that I want us to make, it's a choice that God wants us to make in a very, very strong way at this time. This is why this is the first sermon I want to bring to you. It's a choice that God wants us to make, to stand in the gap for our loved ones, for people we don't even know who are dying, for the world. God wants us to make that choice, and it has to be a strong choice. And, and this, this is why. It says, and the peace of God, if we pray, and the peace of God, that surpasses all understanding, will, guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication. Let your requests be made known to God and the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. The peace of God will come into our lives. I don't know if any of you have lost any sleep over this coronavirus. I've, I've lost a little bit of sleep. But we shouldn't be losing sleep over worrying about what's going to happen. What's going to happen is going to happen. But God wants us to stay faithful to him. He wants us to keep strong in prayer. And, and the peace of God will come. Now, now, it says in the Bible that Jesus Christ, this is what he said about peace. He said he gives peace, not as the world gives. He gives peace. He says, I give to you peace, not as the world gives. So let not your heart be troubled. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Jesus Christ, he also said in John 16, 33, he said, these things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have trouble. And we have trouble right now. In the world you will have trouble. But be happy or be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. No matter what happens, Jesus is in control. He has a future. He has a hope. For you, he has a hope and a future for me. Grace is, is one of the key words of the New Testament. It's probably the most important word. But in the Old Testament, it was this word peace. It was shalom, which, which was like the key word. And this shalom, it, 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 it's, it's more than, than just not having worry. It, it's more than that. It's about well-being. It's about wholeness. It's about completeness. Not just the absence of worry. This is the kind of peace that Jesus promises us so that all through this crisis we can still feel whole and complete and have this perfect peace. It's a complete feeling of wellness. This is what we can have as Christians. This is what we can show those around us. Now, there's something else special about this peace that we read about in this verse. It says, and the peace of God, which I've just talked about, the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. Well, what, what does that mean? Well, when we trust, put our trust in the Prince of Peace, we can have a peace 
that people just can't even believe. Have you ever experienced a time where, as, as a believer where you had peace and people couldn't even believe that you would have peace when you were going through such a difficult trial? I've experienced that. The Apostle Paul, he experienced that. Oh, I just want to read what else he wrote in the same book, Philippians. And Philippians chapter 4, if you want to turn there. And you heard about what he he went through, some of what he went through before, the, all those whippings and stonings and just incredible things that he went through, the, the shipwreck, the, so many, so many things. He was in peril of robbers and, and, and many, many things. But this is what he could write. We already heard that he's in prison and he was in prison many times. But in Philippians 4 and in Verse 11, he says, Not that I speak in regard to need, for I have learned in whatever state I am to be content. I know how to be abased. He knows how to be down and in lowliness and in trouble and humility. He knows how to be in that low place, which is not easy to experience. But he also said, and I know how to abound. He knows how to handle Things when things are going really great as well. Sometimes we struggle with that. When everything's going well, we might get a big head. We don't know how to handle success. But he says, Everywhere and in all things I have learned both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Paul could have peace that surpassed all understanding. This is the peace that you and I can have. That same peace. When we bring our requests to God with thanksgiving, when we bring our supplications to God with thanksgiving, we can have the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. Somebody might have a good security guard and that security guard might be able to stop some bullets coming through, might be able to um, protect them from people showing, throwing their shoes at them or, or rotten food and, and that, that's good, having a security guard. But here we have a promise of peace that is far greater than, than having just a security guard. The rest of that verse says, and the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard our hearts and our minds through Christ Jesus. That's what we really need right now. We need our hearts and our minds guarded because we don't know how deep this is going to get. But it doesn't matter how deep this is going to get. This is a promise of God that through prayer, our hearts and our minds will be guarded. They will be protected. And, and some of us listening may well, before this crisis hit, already have mental illness, may have anxieties, may have fears, even before this hit. And, and I'm, this may, could exacerbate those fears and those anxieties that you have, but it doesn't have to. If through prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, you let your requests be made known to God, your heart, your minds can be protected. So that you won't have worry. You won't have anxiety. And I like, I love the, that song that says, One day at a time, sweet Jesus. One day at a time. That's all I'm asking of you. Pray, God, just for each day to get you through that day. Now, look who's on your side. It says, and the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds 
through Christ Jesus. We not only have God on our side, the Almighty Father, and He's always near. And I love that verse in Psalm 145, 18 that says, The Lord is near to all that call upon Him, to all who call upon Him in truth. Are we calling upon Him in truth? So important that when we call upon Him, we call upon Him in truth. We need to examine ourselves as we come before Almighty God in prayer. We, there may be things that we need to repent of first as we come to God in prayer. We may need to ask God for forgiveness, but God loves that humility. He loves that contrite heart, that humble spirit. And he will hear us when we come to him in humility, confessing our sins. The Lord is near to all of those who call upon him in truth. So we have Jesus Christ on our side. We have the Father God on our side. So it doesn't matter what comes our way. We can have our minds and our hearts guarded. Prayer really does bring peace. But how? How does it really bring peace? Well, just think about it. We are trusting in God. We are not trusting in ourselves. We are trusting in the higher power. God. He has the power. So we can have peace. Think about it. Why does prayer bring, bring peace? We can feel protected. We can feel sheltered under the mighty hand of God. Why else does prayer bring peace and, and guard our hearts and minds? Because we know we are safe in Christ, no matter what happens. The worst could happen, but we know that we have a building not made with hands in the heavens. That's why prayer can bring us peace. Also, we have his power on our side, which is much greater than any power there is in the world. So, brethren, pray. Pray, pray, pray through this time. More than you ever have before. Pray for your friends. Pray for your neighbours. Sometimes I, I think of countries and I go, oh, what, what's going to happen in those countries and specific countries I, I think of and I just want to pray for them. Let's pray more than we've ever prayed before. Let's get to know God. Let's get to know His Son in a more, in a deeper way, in a more intimate way. And I trust that the peace of God that surpasses all understanding it will guard our hearts and our minds. It does say in Scripture that the prayer of a righteous person avails much. It's very effective. It's very powerful. But it does say that the person must be righteous. And so if you're listening to this sermon today and you haven't given your life to God, if you haven't repented of your sins, you must do this. Because when Jesus Christ's blood covers your sins, you are righteous. You are righteous in God's eyes. You are forgiven. This scripture, the prayer of a righteous person, is powerful and effective. That's you when you are, have been forgiven by God and cleansed by the, the blood of, of Jesus Christ. So let's deal with our sins. Let's be clean of our sins and let's pray. Let's pray. Let's pray. God bless you. Keep strong and think of others.